What's going on guys? It's mid-February, deer season's ended, and if you're like me, you're looking back over your gear thinking, how do I make this simpler, easier on myself, and uh, what can be improved? If you're a self-filmer, there's one thing that everybody hates, and you guessed it, it's these guys, camera arms. If you ask me, I don't think there's a great camera arm option on the market. And I have ran a couple different muddies, hated them both. This one here is the Outfitter. It's got a huge base. It's uh, super heavy. Don't know what it weighs, probably seven pounds. I'll put the actual weight in one of these corners. Um, it's a pain to, to put on. It's got ratchet strap, loud. The adjustment gets loud if you don't keep it oiled up. It's just not a good system. And I honestly haven't found, I've ran two muddies and I've ran the Lone Wolf Custom Gear Pocket Arm. The Pocket Arm is a great concept, but if you're a tree stand hunter like I am, it really doesn't work. It's too short. I run a big camera, um, so it has a tremendous amount of bounce and I didn't like that. I had no, I had to set my stands up so I could shoot to my right just because how short the arm was. The, uh, this one's got a little more reach, but it's just an absolute pain to deal with. So what I decided to do after season ended, I started looking around at some different material options and I decided to build my own camera arm. And I'm making this video, uh, just, I'm not interested in selling these arms. If it helps you guys out, I'm gonna show you how I built mine. I'll give you a material list in the description. So if you wanna build your own arm, hey man, I'm here to help. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, shoot them to me in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, sorry for the traffic noise. I really don't have any other good tree option out here. But uh, I'm gonna show you this arm. Basically what I wanted was an arm that operated similar to the Lone Wolf Custom Gear arm. But this one is a lot bigger. It doesn't weigh a tremendous amount more. It's a pound heavier than the Lone Wolf arm. But it's got about 37 inches of total reach, which the first thing that's gonna happen when you start self-filming, you're gonna have a shot straight to your back left. And with most camera arms, you're maneuvering, trying to get behind your back, and it's just a pain. I mean, it's an absolute pain. So I built this arm for myself, and then uh, Dalton over at the Stick Boys saw mine, and he said, hey, build, build us a couple. Um, so I'm building them a couple right now, and uh, just wanted to show you guys how it works. There's... There's no ratchet belt. I just use a, a Lone Wolf XOP type strap and I'll show you how it goes on. Let me get rid of this junky thing here. Great example of why I hate those. That's a pain in the butt. So basically all you gotta do is take a lone wall for XOP strap. This is very similar to the Lone Wolf Custom Gear. You just wanna thread this back a little bit so you get this angle. I know you can't see that very well. This angled back, as you can see in the bubble level. Get it tight and then just thread it out. And the most important part when you're building these, for one, get, get all your holes good and straight with a drill press. 
Um, and second, make sure that your Versa button is exactly in between this tension bolt and this V-bracket. If, if you'll imagine a seesaw, you know it swivels in the middle and it's basically the same concept. To get tension on this, this Versa button needs to be directly in between. And once you get this level, which is pretty level now, that thing is rock solid. I'll show you what it looks like with my camera on it. So here it is with my camera on it. Like I said, I run an XA11, so my camera's pretty big. And it holds the weight really well. Right there, it's all the way out to the side. And that base is not moving. As far as bounce goes, I mean, if you're really gonna, the thing will bounce, but as soon as you let go, once you steady it, it stops. That's one thing I did not like about the Lone Wolf Custom Gear. When you would let go of it, it would just continue to bounce for probably three or four seconds. This one here's got plenty of reach. If I come in here beside of it, you'll see where I'm standing. I mean, this thing will go all the way basically around my body. So there it is. So here is what I came up with. It's flat, it packs easy. We'll start out right here. This is just a Novix tree bracket. You can buy them on their website. I can't remember how much they are. They're like $12, $15. Um, I bought this little hook. I had to buy it in like a five or 10 pack to get what I wanted. But that's to uh, put my pack on. This right here is a one inch solid aluminum tube. Um, got that on Amazon. I had to buy it on, in a three pack. Uh, couldn't buy individuals. And then this right here is um, a six inch carriage bolt, five sixteenths. And then I bought this knob at Lowe's too. These right here you can get uh, on Amazon also. When you're drilling your holes, it's really important to use a drill press because there's absolutely no way that you're going to be able to drill the hole straight by hand. Um, everything I've got, now this right here is threaded. I ended up taking this to a machine shop here in town and uh, they did it for like five dollars. I think is the only, and that's the only thing that I've had to have somebody else do. But these right here, um, this first one is 14 inches. The second one's 12, and the third one is 10 and a half inches. And that's just so everything fits together really nice and gets clearance everywhere. And this is just. Uh, one inch square aluminum tubing. I got it at a local hardware store. Um, that shows you right there. But uh, I got 48 inches. I got one stick and, and that's all I needed. These brackets here, I got on Amazon. Um, again, I had to buy like a 10 pack to get what I needed. And I had to bring it out away from the tube just so that will move without binding up. And how I did that, I just put um, three washers to space that out. Um, what else? Let's see. Okay, the Versa button, I just use a quarter inch bolt. Uh, it's got a steel one inch spacer with a one and a quarter inch 
uh, fender washer. The uh, these bolts here are three eighths. Um, they're three inches long, and in between to get the spacing, um, I need it to be thicker. So this bolt head would be free. So I've got two nylon fender washers and then one nylon spacer. And you'll need to do that twice. And those came from Lowe's also. And then I put these caps on. You can get these at Lowe's or any hardware store. You can get them on Amazon, wherever. On the end, I use a Manfrotto head. Um, this is the one I use. And it's got a 3 8 bolt hole. So, in the end of that, I basically just put a 1 and a quarter inch 3 8 bolt, used a lock washer and a nut, and that way you can just thread that Manfrotto head right on top of it. I'm sure it'll work with... You just have to look at your, your head and see what size the hole is um, to know what size bolt that you need to use. But all in all, I'm really, I'm happy with this camera arm. So as I said earlier, I am not interested at all in selling these. I just wanted to make this video to help anybody else out uh, that's having the same problems as I am. And if you're self-filming, I'm sure you're having the same problems. There just isn't a good arm on the market. And uh, I made this arm to solve the problems that I had. If this is helpful to you guys at all, I'd really appreciate it. You hit that subscribe button and uh, be on the lookout for, for more content coming soon. And uh, hope you enjoy it. And I hope this is a, a big help to somebody else. I'll see you guys on the next one.